Chicago gangster. That's how I'll be remembered. But calling Louis Altieri a gangster is like calling bourbon wet. It's true enough, but doesn't tell you anything. Louis Altieri wasn't just a gangster. Louis Altieri wasn't even Louis Altieri. His real name was Leland Varane, and he started out as a third-rate boxer in Denver. He fought under the name Kid Haynes. He liked the showmanship, but the ring was too much work, and the kid got tired of being introduced to the mat by his opponents. I guess he figured there were easier ways to make a buck. He changed his name to Altieri and turned up in Chicago in 1922. There he hooked up with a thug named Druggin. The two were caught after knocking over a jewelry store, but every eyewitness came down with a case of machine gun induced amnesia. Louis heard destiny calling. Altieri ended up working for a choir boy turned crime boss named Dean O'Banion. Old Dean was as slick and cold as snake oil on ice. A blue-eyed charmer who ran Chicago's notorious north side. He put Altieri in charge of collecting protection money from several unions, including the Theatrical Janitors Union. There's irony for you, though I doubt Altieri ever appreciated it. Two Gun, as Altieri was now being called, was a real pioneer in organized crime. He invented a whole new genre of killing, the gang-style ambush. He would rent an apartment next to his victim's home and wait by a window. When the poor sap stepped out for the day, Altieri would give him a 50 caliber salute with machine guns stolen from the United States Army. But even as Two Gun haunted the dark streets of Chicago's underworld, his heart was elsewhere. Louis Altieri had never forgotten his days in Colorado. He told his friends that he wanted to live there, become a rancher. Two Gun the Cowboy, but never a real cowboy. That wasn't his style. He was a Hollywood cowboy, a soulless Gene Autry with a pair of itchy trigger fingers. Two Gun eventually bought a succession of ranches in Colorado. They called him Diamond Jack. He and his pals would ride out with enough heat to storm Fort Knox and turn hapless deer into Swiss cheese. Subtlety was never Altieri's strong suit. They still talk about him out there. I remember hearing about him in this small town out in the sticks. Sedalia, that was the town's name. Diamond Jack blew through Sedalia tossing dollar bills from his car. He stopped at the general store and he slapped down a thousand dollar bill to buy a single postage stamp. He had a 4,000 acre ranch west of town, up in the Rampart Range Mountains. He spent a lot of time hunting, but even more time at a nearby joint called the Woodbine Lodge. What a place that was. The Woodbine was supposed to be a mountain resort, real popular with the fishing and hunting crowd. Pretty local girls in white dresses serving chicken dinners to the upright folk of Colorado. Dances on Saturday night. It was all good, clean fun. Of course, anything that good had to be a sham. The Woodbine had more slot machines and crap tables than it had dinner tables. Gambling and bootlegging were the order of the day. You had your crap tables and your, and your left wheels and the slot machines. And of course, all through Douglas County, there were slot machines in all those little stores and service stations. Diamond Jack Altieri loved it. The big time gangster from Chicago whooping it up in the Wild West. He had his own twisted version of Camelot set up out there, with himself sitting in King Arthur's throne, an oversized cowboy hat for a crown. He would amuse his subjects by drawing portraits on the walls with machine gun fire. Real highbrow stuff. He even asked a movie director from Denver to come up and capture some of the action on film. When he wanted a bigger audience, Diamond Jack would drive down to Denver. In 1925, he staged the first Rocky Mountain Roundup and Parade. 
The Roundup was a three-day Western show starring none other than Diamond Jack himself. A shame life wasn't so swell back in Chicago. While Diamond Jack was playing Wild Bill in Colorado, Chicago was turning into a charnel house. Gangsters were shooting each other faster than cops could scrape them off the streets. When Chicago finally hired enough straight cops to go after people like Altieri, Diamond Jack the rancher was out of reach. They sent a request to the Douglas County Sheriff to arrest Altieri, but the sheriff refused. He told the Chicago boys, If you want them, you can darn well come out and get them. They never did. Diamond Jack called the sheriff a square dealer and gave him a sheriff's badge and a revolver. The badge was a real work of art, a six-pointed star with diamond studs on each point and a huge sparkler set in the middle. Given Diamond Jack's hair-trigger mentality, the star was a gift no sane man could turn down. Louis Altieri would have been wise to lay low, but staying out of the limelight wasn't in his character. He got into some trouble in Denver and moved further west to a town called Glenwood Springs. In 1927, Altieri divorced his first wife for the daughter of a man who had recently murdered his own wife. I suppose that can be considered a fresh start of sorts. In the early 30s, he tried turning himself into a mining magnet, attempting to sell $500,000 in shares for the Diamond Jack Mining Company. The president of said company was listed as Leland Verain. But Two Gun would never escape the backroom contracts and curbside bloodshed of the Chicago gangs. He may have thought that the old mob wars were over, but his erstwhile business associates were not the types to forgive and forget. Naturally, he was gunned down after he returned. It was Al Capone's men who got him. They used the same routine that Two Gun himself had devised, renting a room close to his apartment and mowing him down when he stepped out. They put enough lead in him to build an anchor and with his poor wife a few yards behind him at the time. It must have been some scene a grand and bloody curtain call for a man who had played many performances. Leland Verain, Kid Haynes, Louis Altieri, Two Gun, and Diamond Jack. To call him a gangster is to paint him with too narrow a brush. Louis Altieri was a showman. He tried an escape of sorts in Colorado, miscasting himself as a Wild West hero. But when the lights went down, Two Gun Altieri could only star in one role that of a ruthless racketeer.